Hey there friends, so I've been thinking a lot about mustard seed faith lately. So last week I received a message from a good friend of mine who desperately needed some prayer. She had some very difficult circumstances in front of her and she wasn't quite sure how she was going to move forward. Um, she ended the conversation by saying that she believed that God would move her mountain. Matthew seventeen twenty says, and he said to them, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. This verse tells us that God wants our prayers to be covered in the fragrance of faith, right? And he tells us that faith as small as a mustard seed can accomplish great things. So why then is it that some mustard seeds don't move mountains? My husband has been suffering from chronic back pain for over 10 years now, and there have been moments that have been really, really hard, and not just for him, but for our whole family. And I pray, and I pray, and I pray, Lord, would you please deliver him from this pain? And I know the Lord is able to heal him, yet the pain remains. I talked to an old friend a while back, um, and she's struggling with the, the passing of her aunt who she was really close with. Um, she recently lost her second battle with cancer. And as I was talking to her, she was fighting back tears and just questioning, you know, why, why did the Lord heal her cancer the first time and not this time? And I often wonder similar things too. Why is it that some prayers seem to possess more mountain moving power than others? Is it a lack of faith? Well, maybe sometimes, but maybe not, right? There's a quote um, that I love. It says, the most glorious reason you exist is for the proclamation of the glory of God to the ends of the world. That's from David Platt. And this is just such a great reminder that our motive for all we do should ultimately be God's glory, no matter the cost. So what if instead of moving the mountain, the glory is found in climbing it? Let me say that again. What if Instead of moving the mountain, the glory is found in climbing it. What if the mountain is God's instrument to further mold my character into the image of Christ? James 1 verses 2 through 4 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Or maybe the Lord wants to use my mountain climbing to display his power and his love and his faithfulness to others. If this were so, would I still want it to be moved? May it not be, Lord. May that not be said of me, Lord. So, my friend, let me ask you a question. What mountains are you facing today? And let me encourage you to keep praying, keep casting those mustard seeds in faith, but ultimately your greatest act of faith is surrender. It's entrusting him whether he chooses to move the mountain or not. So let's fix our eyes fully on Jesus and the hope that he offers us. Let's remember that all trial and uncertainty and pain is only temporary. We have an eternal inheritance waiting for us, right? One that will never spoil, one that will never fade, when there will, where there will be no more anxiety or suffering or sorrow. And this is the hope that gives us the strength to face our mountains, right? Whether they move or whether they stand.